Hi, Tales of Few Expats. Welcome back. And if you're new to our channel, thank you for joining us. My name is Alonzo. I wanted to put this video out. Uh, it's been a while since we've posted something. Just wanted to let you all know what was going on. We've had some people inquiring, like, is your channel going away or what's happening? So what happened is I had laser eye surgery. Um, it's a surgery called PRK, which is similar to LASIK, basically, but it, was, it has a much longer recovery time. Three to four weeks recovery time. Um, so with the LASIK, you know, you can be up and at it in three or four days. With this particular surgery, they're much more subjected to light sensitivity and things like that. So as you all know, filming these videos, most folks use like a light ring or some type of lighting. I couldn't even stand to look at that at all. Um, managed to get through it for the interview we had with Charlotte Van Horn. So we're delayed in getting out the uh, rest of that interview, but we're going to get that out here very soon. Um, but now I think we're recovered enough to start shooting again, so that's what's happened. Our channel isn't going anywhere. And so with that, what is the future of our channel? Well, the future of our channel is we're going to continue with these informational videos that we've had, like our Why Move to Panama Part 1, Part 2 videos, how to open up a bank account in Panama, etc., and those types of informational videos. We also added the Chosen Few Expat Show, which um, we were interviewing some native Panamanians, some realtors, um, some other influential people. In Panama, we have upcoming uh, video with an immigration lawyer, um, and, and we're going to continue to bring you information like that. The one thing that we're going to add are some vlogs um, once we start to do more traveling, getting out and about, once restrictions are uh, lifted, and we plan on taking some trips to like Colombia, Ecuador, um, Costa Rica, places like that. We had a recent anniversary trip to the Dominican Republic in which we did some vlogging. So we're going to put together a video for that and post that for you. Um, so the other update we wanted to give you is on the COVID restrictions in Panama. We put out a video on that in late December when Panama implemented COVID restrictions on December the 23rd. Um, they have since then pushed back the date uh, for the reopening and easing of those restrictions a couple of times. Um, because I guess the data was not going in a direction that they wanted. Um, however, they did report a 30% decrease in COVID cases in the week between January 17th and January 24th. So that bodes very, very well. Um, the new cases dropped below 1,000 a day on February 9th. That was the first time they dropped below 1,000 a day um, <clears throat> since November the 14th. So that was a very good piece of information there. Panama hit a high of 3,612 cases a day on January the 12th, but that now has dropped to 896 um, as of February the 9th. So that is back approaching the level that they had when they reopened the airport on October the 12th when they were somewhere around 650 cases a day. So with the data going in the direction that the government uh, likes to see and that we all like to see, um, the government decided to ease some restrictions now, what they did is that they eliminated the gender-specific restrictions. Uh, previously, men could only go out on Tuesday, Thursdays. Women could go out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, there's no gender restrictions on that. However, in the provinces of Panama and Panama West Day, Panama West Day is where Coronado is. It's a very popular expat destination. Um, so, <clears throat> in Panama and Panama West Day, uh, they do still have weekend lockdowns from 9 p.m. Friday to 4 a.m. Uh, Monday. However, the beaches are open uh, during the week. That is one thing, um, along with the opening of the restaurants on February the 8th. That's one thing that was moved up. Uh, the tourism minister basically reached out to the Minister of Health and was just saying, hey, look, and we, we'd appreciate it. We could open up these beaches um, a little earlier because it was killing them from a tourism standpoint because the original opening date for the beaches was going to be like March the 15th. Um, so they were able to pull that in. So at least the beaches are open uh, during the week. So <clears throat> that all helps uh, for those who are planning a trip to Panama. I would say at this point, I would go ahead and move forward with it. I would plan to maybe make that trip late March, early April. And as things reopen, you can give things some time to settle down and see where things kind of fall out. But for the most part, you should be able to tour around. There's going to be tours available and everything like that it just be at a reduced capacity, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so 
There'll be tours available. Restaurants are going to be open and all of that. The only thing that's going to hurt us for people that are really looking for some nightlife. And by nightlife, I mean like late night life, like clubs and stuff like that uh, may be an issue. But I think for those, most of the people who are watching this channel, according to the demographics, it may not really necessarily impact as much. But you can still get out and enjoy the nights in the evening a little bit because it does get dark pretty early in Panama. It gets dark around, <clears throat> excuse me, 6.30, 6.45, 7 o'clock. Unlike in the U.S., you know, they don't really have time changes in Panama. They're 8 degrees above the equator. So the sunrise and sunset day-to-day -day is pretty consistent. Um, it maybe only floats about, you know, maybe a half hour or so one way or the other. So it's usually dark around 6.30, 6.45. Whereas in the U.S., you know, in the summertime, we had these wild fluctuations in the eastern time zone. It'd be dark at 9.30, maybe get dark at 5.30 or so in the winter time. Um, so that's one thing my wife really doesn't like about Panama is she feels like it's not really enough daylight there. So you want to get up early, get the day started. But you still be able to get out and enjoy at least the first part of the night, you know, or the early part of the night uh, before the curfew kicks in. So I would still uh, move forward with some trips at this point, targeting maybe like late March or uh, April. Uh, so with that, I want to go into some of the, <clears throat> um, the economic recovery. So the economic recovery in Panama uh, post-COVID looks to be still in good shape. I mean, we covered some of this in our How Stable Is the Economy in Panama video. We also covered um, some projects that are going on with the new cruise uh, terminal in Panama City in another video. Um, but here, within the last couple of weeks, there's been a report from World Bank that they're estimating a 5.1% economic recovery in 2021 for Panama. So that's really, really good news to hear there. So to back that up, more so to put their money where their mouth is, they've actually come forth with a $300 million loan to Panama to help out with the economic recovery. So that right there shows uh, the confidence that at least uh, a, a renowned uh, organization like World Bank has in the economic stability and the ability of Panama to recover <clears throat> um, from COVID. Some other more recent developments is that Panama just announced a $2.8 billion third metro line that's going to connect the province of Panama, which of course where Panama City is, to Panama Oeste, um, which is uh, like Ariad, Chirera area. Uh, that line is going to be about a 17, 18 mile long line that's going to connect in with the metro, the first metro line at Albrook Station. And that's going to cut down a lot on the traffic over the Bridge of the Americas, which is a nightmare in the morning for those people who are trying to commute into the city. Um, two, three hour commute in. A lot of them have just trying to get over that bridge. So it's going to help tremendously. I think that project is scheduled to last like 33 months. It's going to be the first phase is going to include uh, 14 uh, stations. So that's good news there. <clears throat> um, another thing that's going on in Panama is that they announced... Uh, a $100 million project basically to increase tourism on uh, Toboga Island. And this is basically to improve the infrastructure there. Um, and it's a $100 million loan through Inter-American Bank Development. They're also developing similar programs for other cities, Bocas and other cities in Panama that's investing in the infrastructure and tourism for those uh, particular cities. So, and again, that's a very good indication um, of recovery post COVID. Um, one other big news, uh, piece of big news that just came out is that Panama announced that there's going to be five new free trade zones that they're establishing in different areas across the country. They already had, um, as we mentioned in previous videos in Cologne, the second largest free trade zone in the world. There's going to be 3,600 direct jobs and 8,400 indirect jobs as a result of this project. So again, that's a very, very good indicator of Panama's economic recovery post-COVID. Um, of course, there's a lot of small and medium businesses that are still hurting, just like in the U.S. and in other parts of the world. Um, sadly, a lot of those businesses may not come back. But just speaking from a larger overall perspective, the country is well positioned to uh, survive COVID and make a comeback here uh, very quickly and quicker than most other nations. So for us, the economic stability of a nation is, was really, really a very, very important choice um, an important factor in us choosing Panama. So with that, hope you all enjoyed the video. 
give us a thumbs up, um, hit the like button, and then uh, please subscribe and let us know if there's any other information you'd like us to cover in future videos. Also leave your comments below and we'll see you all next time.